For the following exercises, consider this scenario. The weight of a newborn is 7.5 pounds. The baby gained one half pound a month for its first year. Find the linear function that models the baby's weight, W, as a function of the age of the baby in month T. All right, so basically, um, we just have to create an equation. Essentially, we have to create a linear equation, something that looks like this, Y is equal to MX plus B. All right. Now, um, if you had to think about this, right, we can sort of, you know, instead of using a formula at the beginning, we can kind of just think logically about what the numbers should look like right over time. And then we could probably piece together the formula. So uh, what's the baby's weight uh, in the, let's say, at time zero? In other words, what's the baby's weight as soon as he or she is born? Let's write 75 pounds, right? So at T zero, baby's weight, let me just erase this for a second. Actually, you know what? I'll just move it over. The baby's weight has to be, the weight has to then be 7.5 pounds. How about after one month? Well, it says the baby gains one half pound every single month. So if the baby started at 7.5 pounds and one month passes, that means that at one month's time, the weight of the baby has to be 8.0, right? And then at two months, what does the baby have to be? Well, it's going to gain another one half pound. And therefore, the baby should be 8.5. And what's going to happen in three months? The weight should be then 9, right, 0.0, etc. So what we need to do, right, we can answer the question, okay, um, in terms of, you know, tell me the weight of the baby at any particular point in time here for the first year. Uh, what we need to do, though, is we need to somehow take this information and translate it into a linear equation. So... Sometimes a little guess and check kind of works or a little thinking about, you know, what, what did you do here in order to find your answers, in order to find the weight here? What did you have to do to, you know, the 7.5 and what did you do, you know, with the time and what were, you, what were you doing, right? Well, you're like, I was, I kept adding a half pound every single year and that's fine. What's another way you could have done it? Well, you could have done it this way. You added a half pound for the first year. And then you added one pound for the second year from the beginning, excuse me, year, I meant month. And then you added one and a half pounds for the three month period from the beginning, right? Do you see that? So in other words, you took 0 0.5 and multiplied it by one, and you added that to the 7.5 to find eight. Then what you could have done was you took 0 0.5 and now multiplied it by two months. That would have given you a value of 1, and you added that to 7.5 to find 8.5. And you might see now what you would do here to get to the 9.0. You would take the 0.5 and multiply it by 3, right? So guess what? This is, this is the equation. This is now the linear formula. So essentially what's happening here is that you're taking the weight or the change in the baby's weight, and you're multiplying it by then the number of months that have passed, and then you are adding that to the original weight of 7.5, right? That's really what's happening. So that's exactly what's happening in this linear formula here. Watch. Can't we say this, that the weight of the baby is equal to 0 0.5 times the time in months plus the original weight of the baby 7.5? Doesn't this linear equation work out to match all of this information? And sure it does, right? That's how we think through it, okay? That's the linear equation. Basically, you can always think about that the y-intercept here, remember b is the y-intercept, this is always kind of the starting value. Think of this as the starting value, all right? And think of this slope here, m, is the change. Change value, okay? And here's just, you know, the x value, in this case it's time, and here's the y value, it's weight in this case. Well, that's all. So it says find a reasonable domain and range, right, for the function uh, w. So domain, that means the possible x values, the possible, possible x values. So they said we have to model this weight from when the baby is born, essentially, throughout its first year. Remember, time is in months. How many months are there in a year? So 12, right? 
So in other words, the possible x values, remember in this case we're calling it t, and the, it doesn't matter, right? Time can go from 0 all the way to 12. So the domain here, you can kind of leave it like this, it's not really right notation, but the domain is any t value that is greater than or equal to, I know this is less than, but uh, the way I'm writing it from left to right, it would be the way I'm saying it should be correct, right? That the time has to be greater than or equal to zero, but it has to be then less than or equal to 12, right? This is the domain, okay? And then the range, now, the range is now just the possible y values. That's all, possible y values. So the question is, you know, what's the smallest y value, aka weight, remember? This is weight in pounds. What's the smallest weight the baby is in this model? Well, it's the weight when he or she is born, right? At 7.5 pounds. So the weight here could start at zero and it can go all the way up to what? How heavy can the baby be? You know, what's the baby's heaviest weight in the first year? We'd say after it reaches 12, right? Months. So you can use your linear equation over here on the left-hand side. Plug in 12 for t. When you plug in 12 for t, this whole thing becomes 6. Add 6 to 7.5. And that works out to be 13.5. So in other words, the weight will go all the way up to 13.5. So what that tells me now is that the range would look something like this. The weight can go, I don't know why I put in zero there, because uh, the baby, I guess technically at conception, right? The baby doesn't really weigh anything. Well, actually, technically that's false. At conception, the weight of the two cells. So in any case, um, I guess technically the baby, oh, that's an interesting philosophical question. Can a can a baby ever weigh nothing? Because if it weighs nothing, it really isn't anything. Okay, enough of the philosophy. So here we get to 7.5. I'm going to st stick our weight value in there, right? That the weight has to be greater than or equal to 7.5. I'm reading that from right to left. And the weight then also has to be less than or equal to 13.5. So that would be a reasonable range. All right. The function w is graph find and interpret the x or the y intercepts. So all that it would look like is a graph like this. We know how to graph these by now, right? The y intercept here is uh, 7.5. That's where the graph starts. So assume that this is 7.5 right here in pounds. And every single year, the baby's weight is going to increase by a half of a pound. Uh, excuse me, every single month, it's going to increase by a half of a pound. So after after one month, sorry, this is months or time on the x, and then this is the weight on the y, the baby's weight will go up by half of a pound. So here it would be about 8.0, right, etc. At two months, right, it would go up to here, boom, 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 boom. And we can just draw our nice little line, okay? All right, so um, if the, okay, find and interpret the x and the y intercepts. Okay, so the y intercept here we already know is 7.5, right? So the 7.5 is equal to the y intercept. And that's the baby's weight at t equals zero, right? At the at the start period of whatever we're modeling. Now the x-intercept, this thing, this graph here, as you can see, would kind of travel all the way down here, and it would eventually intersect that particular x-axis at some negative point in time. So I'll find it, but the meaning of it probably isn't, uh, you know, there probably is no meaning to it. Um, so we would have, so W is equal to 0 0.5 times time plus 7.5. I would plug in now a 0 because I know at this point the Y value is 0. In other words, the W value is 0. So I plug in 0 here. This is 0 0.5 times time plus 7.5. And then I just have to do some algebra here. So then I would, you know, you can subtract this term on over to the left-hand side. So that would be negative 0.5t equals 7.5. Divide out the negative one-half from both sides. And, uh, <clears throat> and we would arrive at a value, right, of approximately 7.5 over 0.5. So 15, okay, so negative 15. So negative 15 months, that's the t value. This obviously graph is not to scale, but this is about negative 15. Um, 
you know, interpret what that means. It doesn't really have a meaning per se. One could say, well, with that, we already know that, you know, um, basically babies mature in, a, in approximately nine months, right? From the point of conception to birth. So negative 15 months or 15 months is way too long. Um, this doesn't represent the point of conception. I, I don't know. It doesn't really represent anything, <laughs> basically. Uh, it doesn't mean anything. So that's the meaning. Nothing. So if the function w is graphed, find and interpret the slope. So, you know, here I'll just going to copy this thing because we're going to be looking at the same graph. So the slope here, remember, I used this equation to w is equal to 0 0.5 t plus 7.5. The slope here, we already basically interpreted it, we interpreted it uh, earlier. So this represents the change in weight per month. In other words, the change in the weight per the change in time, right? Because the month is on the bottom, weight is on the top. This is the same thing as change in Y over change in X. Good, that's what slope means. And boom, 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 boom. You know, it just represents the change in weight per month. That's it, okay? So now this question is asking uh, for when did the baby weigh? When did the baby weight? When was the baby weight 10.4 pounds? So we can use our linear model. That's the advantage of using linear models is that we can kind of get precise calculations now. If I want to find when did the baby weight weigh, when did the baby weigh 10.4 pounds, I'm finding T and they're telling me the W value, the weight. So all we have to do is take this weight, plug it on in and take a look at then what we have. We have now one equation with only one unknown. We love that because we solve it. We can solve it. So subtract the 7.5 from both sides. Okay, great. Should work out to be about 2.9. And since this is early in the morning and I'm still half asleep, we're going to just double check that. So, uh, oh, so 10, well, it would help if I put it into the calculator, right? right? So 2.9, great. And then we're going to take that and divide it by 0.5. So that's going to tell me now, so we take both sides and divide it by a half, right? Divide it by 0.5 there. So we find that the time here is going to be 5.8, 5.8 months. So that's when the baby weighs, you know, 10.4 pounds in about five, almost a little shy of six months. What is the output? So anytime they're asking for the output, they're asking for Y. What is the output? In other words, in this case, it is... W. When the input, whenever they're talking about input, that's the X. And in this case, it's time. And they're telling us the time value. So basically now we use the same linear function. And instead, though, we're going to be plugging in now a T value instead of a W value. So if we plug in a T value instead of a W value here of, of 6.2, then I realize I have one equation, one unknown. I can solve for weight. And that's what this will represent now. So 0 0.5 times 6.2 plus 7.5, 10.6. So the weight here is going to be 10.6 pounds, okay? Um, when, when the time here is 6.2 months, all right? So in other words, 6.2 months, right, uh, into uh, the life of this newborn, right, in terms of the the actual outward life, right, after birth, um, the weight of the baby would be about 10.6 pounds. So that's it. Cool. Guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Hopefully that helps. I appreciate it very much if it, uh, well, I appreciate it if it did. I hope it did. I appreciate it if you could sub subscribe or like, tell your friends, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.